my name is Bill Kalinske. I'm president of the Charles County Watermen's Association, born and raised here on Cobb Island, Maryland. A uh, lifelong waterman, and now my energy and, and my business is wrapped around the oyster fishery here in Charles County, here in, in Cobb Island area in the Wacomica River. And the Wacomica River is really the only place left that's, that's somewhat viable as far as where oysters grow and oysters thrive that is kind of surrounded around Charles County. We do have an oyster fishery in the Potomac River, but several years ago when we had all that rain and all that runoff, a lot of the oysters died. Um, oysters can't tolerate too much of fresh water. So going back to the Wacomica, we've had a program in place working with the Department of Natural Resources for years, many years. It's restocking, it's replanting the Wacomica River. With the low salinity that has taken place through the years, like perhaps through uh, climate change and such, oysters aren't reproducing like they used to many, many years ago. If we go back in this area, in the Cobb Island area back in the 50s and 60s, this river, the Wacomica River, produced more oysters and were harvested more oysters than the entire bay is, is harvested now through the whole total fisheries in the Chesapeake Bay. I guess like I was saying, we have very low recruitment, natural recruitment amongst the oyster fishery here in the Wacomica. So science, through its evolution, has manipulated the oyster through hatcheries. Horn Point Hatchery, located uh, in Cambridge, has came a long ways as far as producing larvae in a laboratory setting that's distributed through people through the Chesapeake Bay. So it starts with larvae uh, that's introduced into a tank, into a tank, a fairly big size tank, uh, where there's shell. There's cleaned, aged shell that's in this tank. From, from there, it, the, the larvae is introduced into it. It normally takes a week or two for the larvae to swim around to attach to these shells. And then the shells are lifted out of this tank and transplanted into the rivers. We have a pretty expensive license fee every year to renew to be able to go out and harvest oysters. A portion of that money is actually thrown back into a pot uh, that's managed through the Department of Natural Resources that we're able to replant and restock oysters in our, our areas. There's 13 or 14 counties throughout the state of Maryland that are able to, to be involved in this program. So during the summertime, we restock, we plant, replant baby oysters. Today, actually, I want to say it's close to 5 million oysters that are going to be planted. Projected for this year in the Wacomico is over 40 million baby oysters that we're kind of hoping to, to plant this summer. Again, it's all based on larvae, based on water conditions, water quality. But it's, it's laboratory, it's science. Uh, this, is, this is how we've evolved through the years to try to help the natural recruitment because here in our area, we don't have that natural recruitment like they have in the lower bay, as far as the oysters reproducing by themselves. Everybody loves oysters, and we grow a fairly good tasting oyster in this environment around here, the water, with the water being like it is. It provides work for watermen. It provides clean water for the Chesapeake Bay. The, the benefits of this are just enormous. Science tells us between 40 and 50 gallons a day are filtered from, from nutrients or from from bad stuff that's in the water because that's what normally what an oyster feeds off of as far as nutrients and and it's just different elements and stuff that are in the water so it'll, fil it'll filtrate the water as far as providing that benefit and also it benefits us to be able to here and go harvest these oysters and catch these oysters and provide a food source for customers for people so yes i mean oysters are very important to the bay Do you want to make positive contributions in your Charles County community but aren't sure where to start? Join one of Charles County's boards, commissions, or committees to see current vacancies and submit an application. Visit www.charlescountymd.gov and follow the boards and commissions links. Stepping up to serve the Charles County community will allow you to shape the county's present and future. <laughs> Applying for jobs with Charles County government is now easier and more efficient. Visit www.charlescountymd.gov for more information. My name is Danielle Mitchell. I'm an Associate County Attorney, and the purpose of the legislative proposal process is to garner feedback from the public on proposed changes or additions to state law or uh, local law. So essentially, it's allowing the public to submit their ideas for what they would like to see different 
in our codes. At that point, the commissioners will hold a public hearing to consider that information and those proposals. That hearing, they're also joined by our Charles County delegation, so they can hear as well directly from the public on those changes that are being proposed to state law, as that's really their wheelhouse. So the commissioners will develop their legislative proposals package and forward that to the Charles County delegation. At that point, it's up to the delegation to decide which bills or proposals they will support, um, and then they will decide whether or not to drop those to make them official bill drafts. The input from the citizens will be used in order for the commissioners to decide what they will support in their package. So when they hear from the citizens on their proposals and when they come to the public hearing and will essentially support whatever those proposals are, the commissioners will then have a work session to debate and discuss whether or not it's a proposal that they would support. So the input from the citizens is really what's going to create the legislative package that will be sent to the delegation. During the 2021 uh, legislative session, we did have a proposal submitted by a resident who was interested in making a change to the alcoholic beverages article of the state code um, to allow for a winery to also hold a secondary license as a retail establishment. So previously that would not be permitted. You can't have two um, licenses, but because of that um, request from the citizen, the commissioners did support that proposal. It did go to the delegation, which in turn supported the proposal, and it did become law in 2021. So that would be an example of a successful legislative proposal being um, submitted by a resident. The public can submit their suggestions by sending a hard copy of their proposals to the Office of the County Attorney. That's at 200 Baltimore Street, La Plata, Maryland, 20646. If they need additional information, they can always contact the Office of the County Attorney. And we would like those proposals submitted by August 13th in order for us to have time to prepare the draft package in advance of the public hearing, which is in September.